Well, we're here to dedicate this very special uh, poster painting by uh, Ted Ellis, which is recognizing um, a few of the black mayors around the state of Louisiana. Uh, it's very moving. You know, as a kid growing up in uh, New Orleans, I had an opportunity to visit the mayor's office when I was a little boy. Um, this was pre-Dutch Moriel uh, uh, back in the 60s, early 60s, early 70s. And, uh, and I never really felt like, you know, I would have an opportunity to be mayor one day. But now we know that kids coming along today can uh, go to the mayor's office and really say, I could be mayor one day. So this kind of reinforces that message that you can be anything you want to be uh, as long as you're willing to work for it. It certainly does inspire young people uh, and others as well, but younger people for sure that uh, hard work and, uh, and preparations uh, can end up to good things, good things being public servants. Uh, I see that we all are public servants, not as much as celebrities. Uh, I don't see myself as one, but as a public servant, willing to serve, blessed over the period of time with hard work and uh, blessed with the opportunity to help others. This is a special piece that pays tribute to five African-American mayors in five of the seven largest cities here in Louisiana. Tell us how you got the idea for the Mount Rushmore theme. So, you know, I just thought that that's such a monumental, um, iconic um, element and, and feature. And so I thought, you know what, why don't I transpose the mayors on Mount Rushmore? And so that's how it came about. What's your reaction when you saw the finished product? Well, you know, as an artist, you're always sort of critical of, of what you create. But I thought it came out extremely well. And so uh, the validation of that was when the mayors responded to it. It's a historic uh, scenario for Louisiana to have five African Americans leading five of the seven largest cities in Louisiana. Uh, but it's a, an opportunity to showcase uh, leadership and provide inspiration to the youth, especially the African American youth uh, of Louisiana. We're very inspired by it. We were part of this project because of uh, the historic nature of it, because of the mayors in representing our cities, and they happen to be in large part in our service area for Acadian Ambulance. So we are uh, partners with these mayors, and we want to work with them uh, to inspire more youth uh, throughout not only Black History Month, but the rest of the year. I think it sends a really positive message. I think it is really well done, and I think that it shows people that they can grow up and do what they want to do, no matter where they come from. I think it's really, really, really great. Several months ago, I got with Mr. Bill Oliver and talked to him about something we had in mind in terms of telling our history of Louisiana. And as we indicated, we have Seven large cities, five of them represented by African-American mayors, and we are proud of that fact. And we equally as proud of the fact that we have our corporate sponsors with us. But before I bring the corporate sponsors up, it is my distinct privilege and single honor to bring up the mayor of Alexandria, who will speak on behalf of all of the other mayors, the Honorable Jeffrey Hall. Please receive him. Uh, thank you all for showing up. And thank Bill and the sponsors for doing what you're doing. Um, I've only been the mayor, say, 65, 68 days, and uh, I can see how busy uh, the others really are. They're a bit more experienced than I am, and they're a lot, lot more larger cities. But uh, it's, it's quite a, uh, it's an enormous task. But it's an enormous task of public servant. And uh, thank you, Reverend Spears, for the prayer. Um, we were talking a moment ago. Um, and we were speaking, and he said some things, and come to find out that one of his close relatives uh, is also a contract attorney of mine. And uh, it's a small world, which is indicative of why it's important to recognize one another and talk and have a network, a broad network of understanding and relationships, because you never know who has some value that can bring some, some help to you. If I didn't learn anything else in the legislature, I learned that. And one of my legislators are here, Edmund Jordan, was here a moment ago. So I got to let Edmund know right now that I will not take this as an opportunity to practice for the upcoming legislative debates. That's normally what we do when we get a microphone when you come out to legislate. So I won't do that. But uh, I am honored, deeply honored, uh, Mr. Ellis, and the work that they did with the, uh, the rendering of, uh, of the African American mayors of the uh, uh, mid sized and larger cities of Louisiana. 
I have a wonderful opportunity to rub shoulder to shoulder with some very experienced people uh, that's nothing but value for me. I have not had the pleasure to get to know Mayor Perkins in Shreveport, but uh, at least that's a guy that's younger, much younger than me. So, uh, but uh, that's a wonderful thing. And I'm hoping that we all bring nothing but strength for each other. I know we will, nothing but strength for each other. Because there's only one thing that we all do that's all very, very similar. It's the same thing, and it's public service. And uh, I look forward to doing it. I worked 32 years at one place, 10 at another place, and decided to retire and then decided to get into public service. I chose to do that. Sometimes my wife says, I don't know what's wrong with you, man, but you did it. And I love it, and I enjoy doing it, but more than anything else, I enjoy meeting people like those that's on the depiction there of the representative the mayor from different towns, and you all that's here today. And I enjoy meeting, knowing, working with you, and solving problems. So again, thank you for having me. Thank you for recognizing me. And uh, if any way I can help, let me know with anything but a speeding ticket. So uh, <laughs> just kidding. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. My name is Courtney Scott, Chief Service Officer in the Office of Mayor President Sharon Weston Broom. As Alan mentioned, Mayor Broom did have to attend services today for one of our officers um, that lost his life in the line of duty. Definitely want to say thank you to everyone who has organized this effort, to Mr. Ellis for his contribution to what Mayor Broom always considers peace, prosperity, and progress. By capturing this vision, this moment, and of course creating further legacy as we celebrate Black History Month. So on behalf of Mayor President Sharon Weston Broom, thank you. Welcome, hi, my name is Kelsey Livingston. Um, I'm here on behalf of the Arts Council of Greater Baton Rouge. Um, I am very happy to be here with you today. I'm not as uh, eloquent and easy speaking without notes, so sorry for looking down. Um, I also have the pleasure of welcoming Mr. Ted Ellis to Baton Rouge. Um, on one of the many stops on this Black History Month tour. Uh, in doing some homework on Mr. Ellis, I was actually very inspired by his entrepreneurial spirit. I encourage you guys to do a little Googling on him. He's a fascinating character um, and an inspiration for every aspiring young artist out there. So thank you and thank you for your contribution. Just a, a point of reference, and, and I guess I would start off by saying leadership is a wonderful thing. Leadership done right is a powerful thing. And when you do it right, you unify, you collaborate, you work together, you share, and you build on each other. And when I look at this poster, what I see is strength. I see the rock of stability, the rock of unity, everybody coming together on this. Uh, I'd like to tell people this was my vision, unfortunately, it wasn't, but it's a great vision. I applaud Alan for putting this together, for Ted creating the masterpiece that shows all of this. But there's also three other leaders across this state, Oxner, Bell, I mean Oxner, Acadian Ambulance, and Blue Cross. What three great leaders probably account for 35,000 employees just in this state alone. An awesome, awesome group of power and leadership also willing to work together to do things. I applaud these five mayors. I applaud this organization, the network organization, for working together to make this happen. Congratulations to the leaders. Well deserve a historic moment. Oxner's very proud. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alan. Good, uh, <clears throat> good morning, everyone. Uh, on behalf of the employee owners of Acadian Companies and Acadian Ambulance Service, uh, we're honored, as is Oshner and Blue Cross, to be a part of this in partnership with Ted and Alan. Um, we are a statewide company as well. We have different uh, operating divisions that operate in all of these cities that these mayors are part of and other uh, mayors who are in the audience. Um, our chairman and CEO, Richard Zuslog, sends his best. Um, it is an honor for us to be a part of this. We, too, would like Bill look at it as a, uh, an inspirational moment for the youth to follow in these great footsteps. And um, of course, we'd like them to do it with Acadian Ambulance as well and Acadian companies. But if not, uh, we wish them well in every endeavor. And again, we're just very proud to be part of this with Ted and his great work. 
and Alan. So thank you very much on behalf of our company. Good morning. Uh, it's still morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is a, a truly great uh, honor and opportunity to the mayor and to other distinguished guests. Um, just a moment to you know, kind of reflect on where we are in, uh, at this particular point in time, celebrating these uh, five great mayors in these five great cities. Um, but a little bit of history, I'm a little bit of a history buff, so I thought one way that we could uh, acknowledge how important this is to recognize that who the first African-American mayor was in the state of Louisiana. Does anybody know? Nope, nope. Who else? Nope. Pierre Calis Landry was the mayor of uh, Donaldsonville in 1868. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, it just occurred to me, I said, I should look that up to see uh, who was actually the first black mayor. I'm from New Orleans, of course, spent a lot of time, raised in New Orleans, spent a lot of time in Baton Rouge, so very familiar with the history of African-American mayor and leaders in, in, in those areas. But um, I didn't know about uh, Pierre Calis Landry. And I was telling someone earlier that I remember as a young boy going into the mayor's office in New Orleans, you know, this was back in the 90s. I'm, I'm teasing. This was, back, <laughs> this was back in, I don't know, the late 60s, maybe early 70s. But I remember thinking to myself, man, um, I, it would be nice to be mayor, but, you know, that will probably never happen because in those days, you know, you never really saw any black mayors and you wasn't really thinking I could do that too. Um, of course, I was wrong because Mayor Moriel, uh, Ernest Dutch Moriel, was our first mayor, and we've had a series of mayors since then. So we know that it's very prop possible, and, um, and it's good, and it's great that we have this kind of leadership around the state. Another little uh, piece of history. You know that we had probably the first African-American governor in uh, the country with PBS pinched back at, during Reconstruction. A lot of people don't realize that. And um, I'm also proud to say that my, my brother's father-in-law, I don't know what the technical term for that is, um, is uh, General Trask. He actually was a mayor in um, Lake Providence, Louisiana, in the bustling metropolis of Lake Providence, Louisiana, which is, uh, I don't know that anybody would want to claim that, but um, it is a town up in, uh, near the Arkansas border. So, um, it's, and it's great that we have this legacy running throughout the state. At Blue Cross, it is certainly our pleasure, and we feel it's an obligation to support projects like this. And we want to commend Ted Ellis for his beautiful rendering and his vision um, to celebrate this on this particular occasion. With all of the crazy things that we have going on in society today, this is a great opportunity to show that diversity does work and it's great to have representation in the, in the uh, leadership that's reflective of the population in which it serves. So on behalf of Dr. Steve Uverhai, our CEO, um, we want to say that it's our pleasure to be a part of this. Um, and also, Blue Cross is spread out all over the state of Louisiana, and we want to be sure to be a positive part of those communities which we serve. So thanks again. All the time? Jeff, I got you beaten by 35 days, okay? All right. <laughs> On the lesser side, you got 60, I got 30. Uh, thank you, Alan. Uh, thank to the sponsors, uh, Mr. Ellis. I'm humbled to be standing here before such distinguished guests. To know where you're going, you always have to remember where you're from. And as we reflect on those who did not have the opportunity to do what we're doing today, to be servants of people. Jeff uh, said about his wife, uh, asked him what he's doing in that. Well, 10 years ago, my wife said, well, I want to get into politics. I said, no, I want to be a public servant. And that's what we do each and every day. That walk that hill that we climb it's not easy but in the position that we serve we do it to help people and move along move along the community and the city that we serve so to each of you who are present here continued blessings god be with you on that walk each and every day good evening on behalf of the city of port Island, i'd like to congratulate all the honorees especially you mayor 
Um, it's an honor to have y'all uh, to celebrate y'all new uh, term in office, uh, especially during the Black History uh, Month. Um, as you know, Port Allen is right across the river. Uh, we also have speeders too. <laughs> and we kind of stay away from the ticket issue. But uh, we also want to uh, thank all the sponsors who put uh, uh, their things together so that, that we can have this special event. But uh, one thing about being mayor, this is my second term, uh, is uh, being a, a leader for the community. And um, the only way we can be able to lead in the right direction is if we work together. And I look forward to working with you. We have an uh, uh, upcoming uh, mayor's convention in, in Monroe this year and hope to, to see you down in Monroe. So um, congratulations to all the honorees and uh, thank you. Hey, good morning, good morning, good morning. How's everybody doing? Wonderful. Wonderful. It is definitely a great day uh, because God made it. I want to thank Alan for always uh, bringing together some of the greatest people and greatest leaders uh, in this state. Uh, let's give him a big round of applause for always doing that. Uh, I would be remiss if I came in front of you uh, this morning and not uh, told you exactly how I was feeling about this moment here. Um, mayors, uh, has, uh, mayor has a great, great responsibility, and it is Black History Month. Uh, for the, but for those of you in the audience, you have to realize that if a, as an African-American leader, mayor, governor, there is an added uh, responsibility for us as African-American leaders. And so I, I'm going to have to be candid with you and tell you that it is an awesome responsibility, Mayor, that but when you're an African-American leader and an African-American mayor, that responsibility is greater. Um, and we all know why it's like that. We always have to be better. We always have to serve better. Uh, and the people that we support, either white or black, they expect that. So um, it's a great honor. And if you uh, look at the city where, that I represent, the city of Baker in East Baton Rouge Parish, where we have the mayor president, which is a black female, and that's a big, give her a big round of applause, that's it. <laughs> but I, rep, I represent a city of 15,000 where we've been there for about 90 years, and I am the third African-American mayor. The first African-American mayor for the city of Baker was the Dr. Leroy Davis. Everybody knows him uh, from Southern University. And he was followed by uh, Harold Rito um, and then me. And so what we did last year during Black History is that I had my museum people uh, take and, and, and build a, a, and create an African-American corner or a part in the museum. Um, and, and you guys, uh, it has nothing to do with race, but it has to do with the culture and our country and, and where we come from. We still have our problems, but we're moving forward. So whether you're white or black, you still have a responsibility to serve people and, 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 and take care of people. But the biggest thing, we got to understand that God put us in these positions. They, God appoints us in leadership positions. So our loyalty will always be to God and his son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for having me this morning. You know, anytime you're the first in anything, that's a pretty good uh, deal. When you talk about somebody being the first black artist of Disney World, when it wasn't even thought to be possible, that's a really big deal. He is also the first black member from Louisiana or Texas to sit on the 14 member powerful 400 year commission of black history. His biggest thrill, he was the, the, the two top 2019 artist of choice for the Zulu poster for Mardi Gras and for the Tom Jonah Foundation poster as well. It is my distinct privilege and singing honor to introduce not only an artist, but a friend. My close friend, Mr. Ted Ellis. You know, I'm sort of giddy and I got so much to say. Um, a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of passion. And um, I thought about, you know, this is my day, my moment. And I says, you know, that's not true. It's, it's our moment. Um, you know, we the people, um, total engagement, you know, public service, public trust. You know, that, that is what we live for. That's our legacy. Um, you know, what we give back to others is critically important. 
That has been my mantra and pretty much my walk of life. Um, you know, New Orleans is celebrating its 300th um, anniversary and commemoration as African Americans in 1619, 20 or so odd Africans arrived in Port Comfort, Virginia. From the arc of 1619, we have 42 million African Americans here that it's, that's engaged in part of American history. And I look at that and I reflect on this project and we talk about inclusion and diversity that I've learned so much in my museum studies program and um, how important is this project? It's so critically important. When we look at the importance of visual literacy, that's one element. We look at the historical connotation to that with Mount Rushmore and the significance of five African-American mayors in five of the seven largest cities in Louisiana is critically important. And then we talk about the other piece of engagement with the leadership in service to community. And then you have this, this corporate piece that's critically important, you know, that they get it because, you know, they're pretty much the driving force and the foundation for economies throughout our communities so that we can have this engagement element in doing wonderful things. So you have Acadian companies, we have Blue Cross, Blue Shield, and we have Optional. And um, in my five-city tour, I had a chance to really engage Tim and Bill. And Bill said, you know, I hadn't fully wrapped myself around this project, but this is a phenomenal project. And um, he said it again earlier today. And we're talking about inclusion and participation and what's important to all of us. You know, you know how do we contribute? How do I contribute artistically in my passion lane? You know, with shared culture and shared identity that benefit all of us. You know, what is it that the corporations can do to give back? So, you know, in this conversation, in this journey, Bill said something that just touched me. He didn't even know it. He says, you know, I'm gonna get these in all the schools. He said, I'm gonna put them up in my hospitals. I'm saying, wow. I said, how does that impact us? You know, for, 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 for my importance, for our shared importance, you know, inclusion, diversity, engagement, participation is critically important. So everybody has a busy schedule here, but you guys took the time, you, you thought about it, and this is a shared moment. So what becomes of this, you know, beyond this point? You know, hopefully we see more projects of engagement like this that will benefit us. Um, I gotta thank Alan for his vision. I was, um, you know, this has been a, a wonderful year for me as a, as a professional artist. Um, I've got a lot of commissions that I was working on the Tom Joyner Commission. And Alan said, I got this wonderful idea, this is what I need to do, I need to jump on it ASAP. And I said, Alan, I really don't have the time. And I thought about Alan Simeon when I met him probably a little bit more than 15 years ago. He had did an incredulous project with the black judges. And I said, I hadn't seen anything like that to commemorate and celebrate the importance of, of law and literacy, you know, as it relates to African Americans. And so I said, well, tell me a little bit more about it. He said, well, I got this idea. He said, say, well, can you paint it? I said, well, I can paint it. I said, you know, do I have enough time? And so I made the time for it. You know, I didn't, make, I didn't excuse it away. You know, I paused and I said, you know, we're going to pull this off and make it happen. So the, um, in a chemical equation, I'm a chemist. You know, there's A and B, and you look for this wonderful outcome. But more than likely, you get a byproduct that's bigger than what you expect. There's going to be something bigger than what we expect out of this engagement here that we didn't, that we didn't anticipate only because our intention is to do good and to do well and to be excellent at what we do. And that's service to the community. Thank you very much. Oh, y'all can do better than that. Get up on your feet and receive our artist, Don Will Ted Ellis. Get up and receive him. <laughs> uh, Secretary Ardwain is under the weather and not able to come. Uh, I had the privilege, privilege earlier of spending a little bit of time with Ted, and as you could tell a minute ago, he's very articulate, and in addition to that, when you look at his work, you know he's a very, uh, very talented person. And Alan, uh, you got to say Alan's a mover and a shaker, right? And Alan's the kind of guy I suspect that he doesn't know what the word we can't do that or no means. <laughs> That's not in his vocabulary. <clears throat> but anyway, I want to, uh, again, uh, welcome you on behalf of Secretary of State Ardwan. It's fitting that we would uh, gather here today and celebrate Black, Black History Month. 
The archives, the building that you're in here, it holds records and artifacts that, are, that chronicle our state's history, including its journey to civil rights. We have the Louisiana Digital uh, Media Archive, and it holds footage from the Bogalusa Civil Rights March that was led by A.Z. Young. The 105-mile march from Bogalusa to the steps of the Capitol, it gained uh, media's attention nationwide and brought the civil rights movement to the heart uh, of our state here in Louisiana. Of course, as you probably know, uh, Young served later as an executive assistant to Governor Edwin Edwards and from a, he was dealing mainly with minority affairs and of course he held other positions uh, as well. And after his death, he was the first uh, African American to lie in state uh, in the state house. In addition to him, he, of course here in Baton Rouge we had Reverend T.J. Jemison that led the 1953 Baton Rouge uh, bus boycott and it was the first large scale bus boycott protesting uh, racial segregation in the South. And these two men, Young and uh, Jemison, were among those, the many others, that paved the way for African Americans uh, here in the state of Louisiana. And today we honor uh, a host of mayors who are serving as mayors of these uh, cities in our state. And I want to uh, close by telling you that we uh, thank you, uh, thank them for their service, and we celebrate their leadership. And as a result of the sacrifices of those who came uh, before them, uh, their success has been made, uh, been made possible. Uh, if you didn't notice, we have refreshments outside, uh, hors d'oeuvres that uh, be sure and uh, stop there as you leave. Those were provided by the friends of the archives and we appreciate them doing that. And again, <clears throat> on behalf of the secretary, we appreciate you being here very much. Thank you. I think it sends a message to the people in the state of Louisiana and around the country that Louisiana is a progressive state, that we are, uh, we're changing and, and our leadership reflects the population of the people. So I think it's a strong message about how far we've come as a state.